We're back here on Southeastern 14 talking SEC football. I am Chase Robinson. We're going to dive into the Texas Longhorns today. We're going to be talking with Thomas Jones with the Austin American Statesman here in just a couple of minutes. But first, we've got to remind you about Bet Online, your number one source for all of your summer sports this season MLB, golf, NBA, NHL. The latest stats, news, and scores available to you. Your favorite teams get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So the Texas Longhorns, the Oklahoma Sooners, both joining the SEC. And I'm curious, Thomas, just as you are around the program, you're around the fan base, what's what's the vibe right now, especially among the fans? Uh, is it exciting heading into uh, the first year in the SEC? Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, when this first started happening, when they talked about Texas joining the SEC, you know, two, three years ago, there was a, a lot of anxiety. They're like, really? We want to go over the SEC, get our get our heads beat in, uh, become irrelevant like what Arkansas when they entered 30 years ago, AM, what, 13 years ago? But the last couple of years, the way Sark has the Texas program moving, I think that's um there's been some comfort to the to the UT fans. The anxiety has eased a little bit, especially with how Texas has performed when they have faced an SEC team. Yeah, and uh, I think this is a, a better time than ever for Texas to join. Just And again, you're around the program uh, day in and day out. What is it that when Steve Sarkeesian took the Texas job, what about it changed? What it, what has gotten them to where they are now under his leadership? I, I think, you know, Sark always talks about recruiting big humans. You know, that's that's his, that's his favorite phrase. When he coached in the SEC with, with Nick at, at, at Alabama, you know, he saw the type of athleticism and size on both lines, and that was a priority. You know, he didn't focus so much on the running backs, the defensive backs, receivers. You know, that worked itself out. He wanted to get bigger. He wanted to get more athletic up front on both sides of the line, and that was his priority, and I think that's what how he turned Texas into an SEC team in really just a couple of years. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, the playoff appearance last year, uh, winning the Big 12, um, it, it seems like, and, and you mentioned the excitement of joining the SEC, but there, there's got to be just a lot of excitement around Texas football right now as a whole after years of, uh, you think back to, to 09 playing for a national championship against Alabama and, and now making the playoffs. And, and between that was, was some struggling years, but uh, Texas football, I mean, it's, it's a premier program right now. Yeah, and, and, and the fans here, you know, they like to think of their program as a you know, sleeping giant, so to speak. You know, how can we get back to that Mac Brown era of the 2000s where it seems like Texas was in contention year after year after year? Um, you know, they were wondering the wild, to be honest, for about a decade. You know, the Charlie Strong hire didn't work out when he followed Mac. You know, Tom Herman had his ups and downs. And now you're on your third coach since Mac Brown and Sarkeesian. And, and Sark gets it. He's, um, he's brought a level of professionalism to this program. And former Texas uh, athletic director of the Lost Dodds had this phrase because there's so many boosters at Texas. There's so much money floating around. And he would always say, we got to get all the BBs into the box. And Sark has kind of done that. You know, the boosters are happy. The fans are happy. Everybody likes winning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, so let's talk about this year. And and I was able to watch the the spring game just to kind of get a glimpse of of this team. And I know you you can't learn everything in a spring game. You don't learn a lot in a spring game, honestly. But uh, one thing I picked up on is that Texas may have the strongest quarterback room uh, in the country. Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning both. And and it's been stated by Sark that Quinn Ewers is the guy. He's the starter. But um, as far as the quarterback room goes, I don't think there's there's much concern for for Longhorn fans. Yeah, Arch looked pretty good, didn't he? He sure did. He looked pretty good. Now, Quinn, you know, Quinn's entering his third year as a starter. You, you know, Quinn Ewers is, is the starter. He knows the offense. He'll be good. I think the question is, okay, you got this prodigy in Arch Manning who hasn't really played any. How's he going to look? Man, he, he looked legit. He looked like a next-level guy in that spring game. He's big. He's very athletic. I think people forget that. They think of Eli and, and, and Peyton – you know, Arch can run. He's like his daddy. You know, Cooper was a good receiver back in his day. Arch is, is Arch is the future. This season belongs to Quinn, but Arch is the future. 
Who are some uh, some guys around the quarterback? I know a lot of people getting focused on the the quarterback this there at Texas, but who are some guys, some skill guys around him who will uh, get the ball a lot this year? You know, they revamped their entire uh, receiving core. Isaiah Bond, the kid from Alabama that transferred in, man, he's really good. He's really good. He can fly. He's a good route runner. I think Bama fans know that. You know, they got this kid in from Houston, a Matthew Golden, who's a very good player, very good kick returner, too. He's going to have a big impact. And, and really, this freshman, one of the five-star kids they signed from St. Louis, a guy named Ryan Wingo, man, 6'2", 205, 210. He doesn't look like a freshman. He's a big NFL body type of receiver. I, I think he could – essentially start and i think he could have a breakout year as a freshman running back uh as, as far as the running backs go any any uh guys you think could could stand out this year yeah i think cj baxter see people forget cj baxter was a five-star kid last year he beat out jonathan brooks for the starting job in the preseason then he got hurt in what the second third game and jonathan brooks came on and became a star but baxter won that job i i, I think cj baxter I, I think he could uh, surprise people. He's a sophomore, another big kid, you know, 215, you know, six foot, six one. I think he, and the way Sark likes to run the ball, I think Baxter could um, really surprise some people. I think he could play a bigger role than people realize. And we mentioned the, the quarterbacks a minute ago, but Quinn Ewers is a guy, you mentioned his experience. He's, yeah. you know, had some injuries and, uh, you know, and, and, and whatnot in his career, but, uh, what is it about him you think that uh, that that has him in the position he is to to lead this team? He got his team to the playoffs last year. What is it about Quinn Ewers? You know, just from arm talent alone, you know, he, he is an elite arm. He can throw off platform. He can get those Mahomes sidearms. You you know, he has a quick delivery. You know, his sometimes his fundamentals aren't the most solid. I, I know Sark gets on him about his footwork and and he's not the biggest kid. You know, he's about he's listed at 6'2", you know, around 200 pounds. Um, athletic enough, but really just that pure arm talent. He can make every throw downfield. He can hit the deep outs. He can go deep. Decision-making is good, as it should be for a third-year starter. So really, if you take that arm talent and put him in a third year as a starter with, with Sarkeesian, who is a great quarterback's coach, I think that's a, that's a nice recipe to have. Yeah, sure is. Uh, on the defensive side of things, uh, what what have you learned maybe during the spring or in the offseason about uh, what the Longhorns have on defense? Well, that, that's going to be the question because they struggled in pass defense last year. I think we remember the Sugar Bowl. You know, Michael Penix lit them up. You know, he threw for 450 yards or whatever. I mean, their, their DBs and their scheme have to get a little bit better in the secondary. Now, they got some young talent back there. But they also, they need a better pass rush. You, you know, their edges didn't get that much pressure last year. Those big defensive tackles they had, you know, Byron Murphy's now in the NFL, Rondé Sweat's in the NFL. They got a lot of push, but those guys on the edges got to get more sacks. And they brought some guys in. You know, Trey Moore is this recruit that really excelled at the lower level. UTSA, I think he had 14 sacks or something last year, really gets after the quarterback. And Colin Simmons is a five-star recruit that they hope can make a big impact as a freshman. But I think the best thing for them is they had this kid last year, Anthony Hill, five-star linebacker type. He was a defensive freshman of the year in the Big 12. He played on the outside last year. They're moving him inside. He's kind of become their middle linebacker. He's going to have a really big year. And they need it. They, they don't have a lot of depth at linebacker. Maybe their biggest weakness. That and, you know, they had to rebuild those defensive tackles. As far as as the portal goes, were they were they uh, did they kind of go hard after the portal in the spring window of bringing guys in? What, what's the situation? Are there any players or any positions are saying, "Hey, we we need to get a commitment from a guy out of the portal this spring"? They targeted a defensive tackle was a priority, you know, and they brought a couple of big bodies in that are going to. I mean, no superstars, but guys are going to rotate. Um, you know, they probably have now about six defensive tackles that they can rotate in. I think that's what Sark likes. But now, just yesterday, Kendrick Blackshire, the former Alabama linebacker, entered the portal, and Texas isn't the deepest at that position anyway. So they probably – they have four scholarship spots open as of, what, Wednesday morning? So they're probably going to look for a linebacker. And they lost uh, – Terrence Brooks was a starting cornerback 
He wasn't great, but he was a starter last year. He entered the portal. So they probably won another cornerback as well. Interesting stuff. And we are uh, glad to have Texas in the uh, Southeastern Conference. Looking forward to seeing the Longhorns uh, play an SEC schedule. Again, uh, you know, a lot of excitement around Texas football right now, obviously with the playoff run last year and, and reloading again with a great head coach. So, uh, you know, there's – uh, some teams you would have thought, well, I don't know about them joining the SEC, but like we mentioned, Texas definitely fit uh, here in the SEC. Thomas Jones, you can see his uh, work there with the Austin American Statesman. Thomas, really appreciate you uh, talking some Texas football with me today, and of course we will uh, do it again soon. Uh, welcome to the SEC, and we appreciate you coming on today. Hey, appreciate it, Chase. Y'all, y'all give me a call anytime. It's fun. Will do. We will have more SEC football content coming your way. Subscribe to the channel, Southeastern 14. Follow us on Twitter at 14Southeastern. Like our video, share it with your friends. Spread the word about Southeastern 14.